Hello guys, welcome back to Power Apps Learning Channel. In this video, we are going to learn about a uh, main aspect of Power Automate. We are going to understand the limitation of it. Uh, what are the flow runs or action request limits for your flows or for your tenant? Because you you might have faced these issues if you have lot of flows built and those are getting uh, i mean during the day or during 24 hours if your flows are running like more than thousand times and if there are more than 100 actions in each of the flow you might have faced these issues so we will just try to understand what are the limits and what is this action request so first question of course uh, what you will have in your mind is what is counted in this action request limit so let me take let me tell you an example uh, let let just switch to a flow we i have created a test flow here let me just edit this flow first to show you how many actions we have in this particular flow so if you can see here we have one two three four five actions out of these first one is a trigger and rest of the actions so we have one trigger and four actions here now i'll just go back so in the flow portal, when you come to your flow, you can see an analytics tab here. So if you go to analytics tab and it will show you the usage of your flow, how many times it has ran in last 30 days, last 14 days, last seven days, and how many action requests have been used. So the first tab is actions. You can see here total action requests by day. And if I hover on this, the billable actions are five. So actually I had ran this flow yesterday once and you can see the actions, billable actions are five. If I go to usage, it will show you how many times the flow ran. So you can see here the flow ran only once, which is yesterday. Yesterday I had ran this flow only once. So the flow run is count is one and the actions, how many actions it has consumed is five. Now why it has consume, consumed 5 actions is because we have 5 actions in our flow. So as you can see here, the action request will count everything, every small actions, doesn't matter if it is initialized variable or setting variables, if it is conditions, if it is trigger, everything will be counted into action request limits. So as you can see here, the triggers will be counted, the actions will be counted, all actions including initialized variables, set variables, loop iterations. You have loop loops like apply to each and you have get items, which is getting 100 items from let's say your data source and you have a loop to perform some data operations. If it is looping 100 times, it will be counted as 100 action requests. The failed actions also will be counted the retrials, if you have set any ret uh, retrial policy on your particular actions. So all these will be counted under your action request. And all these uh, limits will be counted on the flow owner account. Whoever has created the flow, who, that person will be of course a flow owner. It will be counted against that particular account. Now, once we have understood what is action request limit now let's see what are the limitations uh, set depending on your license or depending on your subscription so microsoft team have segregated these licensing or the subscription uh, under different categories like they have named it named it as performance profile so as you can see on the screen is if you have free if you're using free license or if you're using office 365 subscription doesn't matter if it is F1, K1 or E3 or E5. If you have a trial license or if you have paid license, which is on top of Office 365 subscription, you have Power Apps Plan 1, which is, of course, this is an old licensing uh, terminology, Power Apps or Power Automate Plan 1. You belong to low performance profile category and what you, have get, what you get is 2000 action request limits per 24 hours. So as you can see here, these kind of flows like the, the flow with these five actions and you can see here it has ran only once. So it has consumed five 
or action uh, limits, action request limits. So then you can calculate how many times uh, this particular flow can run within 24 hours and what will happen if it reaches the, the throttling limit of 2000. So the flow will stop working, it will throw an error and it will perform retrials. Again, that will add, add on the action request limits. Again, this is not hard limit. Uh, Microsoft team says that if it grows beyond, if it goes beyond this, the flow will still run. But, but if it goes way beyond this, like way beyond like 2500, let's say, then the flow will stop running and it will wait uh, or it, it might run after like once the 24 hours uh, has crossed and it, it might run successfully on the next next upcoming day. So moving to the next uh, performance profile, which is if you have power apps per user plan or if you have power apps power automate per user plan or talking about the old terminology, which is power apps or power automate plan two, which belongs to medium low one performance profile, you will get 5000 uh, action request limits per 24 hours. And if you are Dynamics 365 Enterprise or professional plan, you belong to medium low two, which is 20,000 action request limits if you have power automate per flow plan which is which belongs to high performance profile you will get one lakh uh, action request limits within 24 hours but most of most of the organization or most of us are using office 365 subscription and rarely if you need to uh, make use of any premium connectors you might purchase a power apps or power automate per user plan which which belongs to medium low one which is 5000 so you might you will get hardly 5000 plus to 2000 which is because let's say you you purchase power automate per user plan which gives you 5000 limit per 24 hours and of course you might have one of the office 365 subscription uh, or license also assigned to it so it will combine the limit uh, which is 2000 plus 5000 you will get 7000 a uh, limit during 24 hours now once we have understood what is counted under the action request limits all the trigger action loop iteration failed action everything and this is counted on the the flow owner account and these are the limits set depending on your licensing and subscription plan now how you can overcome this or how you can avoid throttling issues uh, provided you belong to particular particular performance profile you have specific license as assigned and you know the limit now and you know how many flows you have created how many actions are there how many how many times it is going to run so you can calculate everything uh, beforehand uh, so that your flows shouldn't stop or it should not throw and throttling limit issue and there should not be issue when you, you are running these flows in the production so what you can do is uh, try to optimize your flows what i mean here is try to remove unnecessary actions try to club multiple actions into one if you if you are performing a lot of data operations like set variables or you, are, you have used a compose operation you are doing concatenate, replace, you're performing some string operations. So you can try to do all that into one action instead of uh, doing it in separate actions. So try to optimize your flows, try to filter, uh, add filters or use, make use of top clauses in get items query. Uh, try to avoid apply to each loops. Of course, I, of course, this is not really you can avoid this but if it is possible try to avoid apply to each loop because it will it will unnecessarily count uh, into your uh, action limits action request limits and the most important part is try to delegate the ownership of the flows so i understand that as a recommended uh, approach we might have a service account created in our organization and that service account is used to create all the flows what is happening you have let's say 100 flows which is which is created using service account and uh, 
all those hundred flows are running so many times during 24 hours so everything will be counted on that particular service account only and you have a lot of other users available in the organization they also have office 365 subscription assigned to them they also have 2000 limits which is being vested so what you can do is you can make some of the users from your IT team as owners of the flows so their limits will get utilized for those flows and we are delegating the the utilization of the flow limits from one service account to multiple uh, users within the organization now to tell you a specific example uh, if you need to sync thousands of records from SharePoint list to a SQL DB then the only only solution you can have is don't use insert row action instead use execute store procedure action and try to sync in the bulk so i'll be uploading a separate video on this part uh, just stay tuned uh, i'll be uploading the video soon i hope this this will help you guys and i have uh, tried to elaborate what is action requests what are things counted into it what are the limits available uh, or limit set by Microsoft team for each of the license and subscription and how you can try to overcome this and how you can see uh, how much action request is consumed for a particular flow you can go to analytics tab from your flow you can go to analytics tab and you can see how many times it has run in last 30 days how many action requests have been utilized by this particular flow so you can forecast the usage in future and you can club the usage of multiple flows and uh, calculate if it is really throttling it, it is going to really throttle the limit or you are good to go well that's it in this video uh, i hope this will help you guys thank you for watching